Choose a garage again. Safety. Safety. And it's my box, so I do whatever I want with them. Bonjour. Do you want more home decor? Me too. And I want to spend exactly zero money on it. Today we are about to embark in a magical journey where we turn discarded treasures into whimsical pieces of dark academia home decor. That's right, let's bring some goth and whimsy here. Now you might be wondering why I spend so much time and energy on dusty old pieces instead of buying new beautiful home decor because I'm cheap and also it's going to be fun. Let's step into the dark academia spirit and let creativity salvage some junk. Plus, it's a fantastic way to give a new life to an object that might have just end up in the trash. Recycling. Wow. All the tools and materials are just sitting there in my house waiting to be transformed, taking up so much precious storage space and I still have so much stuff to go through from the previous owner. So let's dig into the depths of the garage. Embrace the darkness and the hot glue. So grab your favorite mug of hot drink, cozy up in your comfiest chair with your cat or any hairy thing, and let's get to work. First, let's go to the garage, also known as the dumping ground for old stuff. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, oh, so much stuff. Can you imagine this is my garage? This is not a second hand shop. Ideas. I'm going to customize those two paintings with some books. I have bought this, a white logo, and I think it's perfect for dark academia stuff. I think I could do like a wild scenery in it with the fake plants, some scraps of this uh, driftwood, and the biggest project will probably be the lamp. This has a nice shape, but I want to redo everything. With a wider base, some sculpting, and these uh, <laughs> hands. <laughs> I found an old half mannequin on the street, and I'm using the bus here. Oh. The bust is useful for displaying some of the stuff that I made previously, but I don't really have any use for the hands or the arms, so let's use them! Yay! Let's start with the biggest project, the lamp. It has been broken here, but I don't really care, so I'm going to remove everything. Let's go! To the garage again! Safety! have sanded it before attaching the hands. To fill those gaps before adding the clay, I'm going to add a bunch of aluminium foil and then I can start sculpting. Now that the hands look very nice and growing out of the lamp, I think I'm going to add some roots or maybe some vines. No, roots, like a root system growing out of it. I like those trees when it's all gnarly. How do you call that? When the roots are all encasing everything and they can crush the stone. I really like this vibe. It's like dark, but also whimsy and natural. I think it will fit very nicely. And also it will be nice to hide the screws.
These little silicone tools are very useful to add some texture and also they are especially not sticky so they don't uh, mess up the clay. I'm going to let this fully dry before I add more texture to it, like the fine details. And now we can work on the lampshade. A while ago I made strips of cotton tape. It's not biased so it's not very useful so I'm going to use this for the lampshade. And now we can cover this in fabric. Petit morceau! Okay, so this is kind of a mess. I scavenged everything that I could. I think I have enough. This is a piece that I removed from an old costume. I think I can use uh, this synthetic chiffon to add some layering. This, uh, no. This, no. This, for another project. This trim, maybe. Maybe it's too gold. This fabric, I think it fits the aesthetic, but it has those uh, white spots which I really don't like. Maybe I can go around. Yes, this is nice. So, plus it's transparent, maybe it will work with the light. This, bleh, no. I can use this gray crepe, crepe. <laughs> paper. So if I layer this, it will be nice. Or maybe with this, which is an antique lace, could also be nice. And I don't have enough of a black trim, so maybe I can use this. But I can cut it and get a little stripe like this. Also, I want to add some fringe at the bottom of the lampshade, but I only have a few strands of black. This gray is not enough, and this lighter gray is cut in a weird shape. I don't remember why I did that. But maybe I can combine the two and use these to make some sort of tassels. Like this in the center of the gray fringe. But I think it's enough to make something cool. So let's do that. Oh yeah, I forgot to explain. When I wrapped everything in the black strips, that is so now I can pin and sew directly on this metal cage. Done with the fabric! That took such a long time, but I think this was the longest part. Now it's just fun. And now we need hot glue. So before I go to bed, there's something that I really like to do when I do any kind of decorations is to add threads. I use different thickness of threads that I mix with wood glue and I use that to make vines or roots. It works really well, it's super easy to do and it adds a lot of interesting texture, so let's just do that. Wood glue! Au la bois. A few layers of wood glue will help secure everything in place. The little tassels are just made with a simple cord with a knot, and then you roll the trim and glue it around that. That is extremely easy to do. I added some little filigree decorations, and then I can give a haircut to the lampshade. Recently I've been giving haircuts to everything I make. I add the tassels and a bunch of the decorative trim to cover every ugly seam. Paint 
painting the base of the lamp is super quick. I just need two layers of black, going into all the little nooks and crannies. Oh, I definitely should have painted the hands black before gluing them, but... Eh. And then dry brushing everything with an old gold color to match the tassels. I'm doing three layers of this until I have a satisfying color. Why is my voice getting smoother? Must be the saxophone. For the cloche, I need to find the brooch. Somewhere. The costume closet. Uh -huh. Look, it's a bumblebee. Oh, he has suffered a little bit, but it's gonna be fine. That's the only brooch I ever made, all beaded by hand. This was so much fun to do. It was so cute, I love it. But it might be a bit too big for the cloche. That doesn't fit. Change of plan. This will go on the painting. That's even better. And now I need to find something to put there. This is an antique brush from the 1930s. It's broken and it has lost a few of its gems. But I think it will look good, even if it's just a, a temporary decoration inside a cloche. I'm going to replace this with something more fancy. I have these uh, uh, ornaments that someone gave me. Aha. Next up, paintings. These are just printed on a paper and they added a varnish, like a transparent varnish, and pretended that it was a painting. Look, can you see the brush strokes? They don't even really match the flowers, it's just to make you think that it is hand painted, but it's not, it's very cheap. So I'm going to make them into something fun using these books. I have more than 20 of those in the garage and they are not really accurate, they are not really useful, they can't be trusted compared to the internet. It's not useful to anyone, so I'm going to destroy them. Sorry, this might be painful for someone. Tu furbitasse. <laughs> I think I have more than enough for this project. Maybe I will scrap more of those images later for other projects. Or maybe just the cardboard, which would be interesting for crafting. And it's my books, so I do whatever I want with them. <laughs> The trick with all those little pieces of thread is to organize them so you don't see both ends of the thread like they grow from somewhere. Otherwise it might look a little bit like worms or noodles, which is not ideal. <laughs> this plastic plant has been left in the sun for a while, it's kind of crumbling apart, but that's good for me. Jardinage! I need more texture. Oh, it's plastic. The beach is too far. Yes. I know this video is all over the place and it looks like I am randomly destroying things, <laughs> but I promise the result will be nice. You just have to trust the process. Painting with metallic paints is quite hard because you never really know which side is painted, so you have to just... 
I'm done with the painting, let's add the insects. I've changed my mind again. This is nice, but I think this leftover butterfly is just prettier. So I'm going to add this and maybe later I'll change to something else. Still not sure about this thing. Maybe I should add moss and use it as a jewelry holder. What do you think? Two last things to do. To make the insects slightly more realistic, I'm going to add some glue to make them shine a little bit. And after that, turquoise. But of course, UV resin, perfect. This last step is very quick and in my opinion it ties everything together. You make a wash in a very bright turquoise paint. It gives a more oxidized look and more depth to all of your painting. In French this oxidation is called vert de gris and it is very toxic. <laughs> Done! Like this video and now the reveal. Thank you.